TV70. This is the 3.5T Sport. More importantly, it's the Prestige Sport. So it's got pretty much every option because we got the Sport Prestige and the Sport Advanced packages on this vehicle right here. It also has the matte gray paint job. So yeah, this is fully decked out for $65,000. I'm coming at you from behind the camera this morning because Patrick is out on a bit of a vacation. Well deserved. So hey guys, going to be riding solo today. Unfortunately, that's going to mean that I'm not going to be able to take it for a drive, but don't worry. There's going to be plenty of GV70 POV drives for you and walk arounds and all that good stuff. Hello. So we're going to start off with some questions that I had. Hey, Anthony, what is up? Ibrahim, hello. Um, got some questions that were coming in from Instagram. You can follow me there at miles per hour, just like my shirt. Hang on. Just like my shirt. Hang on, down. There it is. You can get one of these shirts for yourself if you'd like it on my YouTube channel, just under every video. Got the miles per hour shirts. Support the channel would be really, would be awesome. I'd really appreciate it. So, hang on. I'm dying. There we go. So yeah, Instagram, follow me there at miles per hour. TikTok, follow me there at miles per hour. Same deal, same as my name written out on my shirt. Ibrahim, hey, uh, do me a favor, bud, and just uh, just don't spam chat, okay? I'm gonna put you on a little bit of a timeout. Okay, so the questions that I had were from Jaden. He asked, how much is the paint color? So this paint color is called Melbourne Gray. It is a matte finish with some metallic flake on it. It's beautiful and it costs 1500 bucks, which is not a lot considering uh, that matte paint jobs can get very, very expensive. That Lamborghini Urus I was driving not too long ago was I think a $15,000 paint job. Sunjib, hello. And, oh, Aspire, hello. Saying hi to folks. Buenos tardes from Spain, Juan, hello. Thank you for joining. Um, and Gamelio, hello. Anthony asks, how many different packages are there? Okay, so there are, I think, only two main packages that you can add to the Sport. The Sport Prestige that this has and the Sport Advanced. And those give you things like Napa leather seats and you get these 21-inch wheels instead of the standard 19-inch wheels. Clint, hello, thanks for joining. Enku, hello, thank you for joining. What is the trunk space? Aspire asks, that is 29 cubic feet of space. And I keep going down there. It's not actually down there. The trunk release is here, just below the wiper. So I'll show you the trunk. 29 cubic feet of space is great in this segment. It's tied with a BMW X3 for the most cargo space. When you think about things like the Mercedes AMG GLC 43, that has 20 cubic feet of space. The Audi SQ5 has like 22, so 29 is excellent. There is a small bit of extra storage under here as well. But yeah, this is all great. And you can fold down the seats really easily with these levers on the side to make it go flat. And that opens it up to 57 cubic feet of space. Let's see, this or Range Rover Velar SVR autobiography. Uh, the Velar, eh, kind of almost sort of the same segment. It's just a little more premium than this. I love this GV70. And I mean, you'll see that in my in-depth review that I've got coming out. So uh, look for that. Mark Levitt, hi Miles, awesome SUV GV70, I agree. Uh, this is the GV70, not the G70. I myself was confused a little bit. It is not electric, music -t. That's hard for me to say, music -t. It's not electric. This is a twin turbo V6, making 375 horsepower. Quantina Wilcox, hello, what is up? What other questions do we have? Race it, I'm not gonna be racing it, but you will see some launch control in my POV drives that I've got coming out and uh, in my review. So I answered, what is the boot space? Let's see, who, is el who else was asking a question? Ahmad was asking, how much is it? This one is tested, is $65,000. The 3.5T Sport starts at 53.6, and that's cheaper than all its main rivals, the X3 M40i, the Audi SQ5, the Mercedes AMG GLC. You wanna see under the hood, Anthony? Yeah, we can make that happen. And guys, I'll do my best to keep track of the questions, but you know, don't forget, you can always do a super chat to one, support the channel, and two, make sure your question gets answered. 
What kind of gas does it require? This is just, well, not just, it's gonna require premium gasoline, Lorenzo. Here's that motor. 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 makes 375 horsepower. Hello, good afternoon, Kevin, thanks for joining. And 391 pound-feet of torque. Eric, this is an all-wheel drive vehicle as standard. The GV70 is only offered in all-wheel drive, even if you have the 2.0 turbo or 2.5 turbo or the 3.5 turbo. They're both all-wheel drive, but it's a rear-biased all-wheel drive system. Important distinction there, so it's not front-biased. Not a lot of understeer to this vehicle. And do we want to hear it start up? I think we can do that. The front grille kind of looks like Bentley, yeah. And uh, that's not, uh, not a mistake. Genesis borrowed some of the designers from Bentley. They borrowed, they, they ported them over. They brought them over. Prothamesh, I'm just gonna leave this here. Genesis might be the best luxury for the buck. Hey man, you're not, f I, would, I would not disagree with that. There's a heck of a lot of value here. Nice engine, we'll miss those in Europe thanks to regulations. Juan, yeah, I, I mean, it, and the U.S. is not far behind. We're going to be going towards all electric vehicles very soon here, so we'll miss things like this. Uh, can I make the 22 Genesis GV80 3.5 T-Sports? Sunjib. Um, let's see, I've done the 21 GV80 3.5 T-Sports, so there's not really many changes for 22, so go ahead and watch those videos if you haven't already. Nice engine. I'm going to start this up. On our way in, look at this carbon fiber. Is that not beautiful? That's part of the Sport Prestige package. Bill, has it been tested for a quarter mile? I'd like to know what the quarter mile time is. I do not know if it's been tested in the quarter mile. Car and driver and motor trend typically do those things. I don't know if this vehicle has been fully tested by them. Last I checked, there were some metrics they hadn't fully vetted. So I would, uh, I would check back on their sites I don't know that figure if it has been done off the top of my head. Oh, uh, who else asked about, someone asked if CarPlay was full screen, but that was not Jaden, it was not Amand. It was, sorry, I forgot on Instagram, someone asked if CarPlay was full screen. It is not full screen. There's a little section of the screen over here. This is a 14 and a half inch display. So it takes, I wanna say like 12 inches of CarPlay, it's plenty. And then Cameron always asks for the creek test. so. I'm gonna do that while I'm sitting here. I'm gonna close the door so you don't hear that in the background before I rev it. Mm, very solid, no sound there. Not even a creak there on the gloss black. Ah, a little creak there, okay. I got some creak. A tiny bit of a creak on the gloss black on the window, on the uh, air vents. That's pretty solid. Okay, small creak there. So on things that you would expect to creak, it creaks, like the gloss black, but nothing else that you would want it to be solid does it creak. Nowhere in this console, some of the carbon fiber, which again, you would expect, like the gloss black, it to creak. It creaks a little bit, but that's okay. One, the dash is nicely placed as an elegant piece of design, not like Mercedes pasting tablets on premium cars. It is very well integrated. This, yeah, it sits atop the dashboard, but they sort of kind of, they recessed it in nicely. Is it leather? This is leatherette here. Uh, who asked that? Aspire. It is leatherette here, but the seats are Napa leather and suede. Very nice. Running back, see what I missed. The red color, yeah, Seville red music. It's, it's nice, right? On the carbon fiber, looks super cool. Who makes the stereo system? Eric, this is a Lexicon sound system, 16 speaker system, and I'll have some thoughts on it in my review. Miles per gallon, Anthony. 21 combined, they say. However, look what I've been averaging, 11. And that's over a number of miles on for a week behind the wheel of the car. And so it's supposed to get 21. The fact that I'm getting 11 is pretty bad. That's not great. Can I do a McLaren 720S? Quintina, I have already done a McLaren 720S. Go check it out on the, camp, on the channel. 21 Tesla Model Y, I'm working on that one. Uh, Tesla doesn't have a PR department, so it's a little harder for me to get that but I'll, I'll see if I can do like an overnight loan or something. Uh, why are people asking about quarter mile towns for a luxury car? Because Prothamesh, it's a sport luxury vehicle. So those two things are blended. You would ask for that on a BMW, you'd ask for it on this one. Sparsh, so funny. Someone already asked about this or Velar SV Autobiography. And I'm gonna say the Velar SV Autobiography is 
into the $80,000. And this one fully loaded is 65. And I'll tell you what, there's not a lot that that Velar has that this doesn't have. Except the Velar has a little more power. How fast does it go? Quintina asks. 150, 150 miles per hour is the top speed. Can I use the windshield wiper? Ash, Ashutosh. Ashutosh? Yes, I can. So here we go. There are the wipers. And if you spray a little liquid, wiper fluid, that's how that looks. Yeah, yeah. So, Andre, yeah, to your point, the Velar, more power. But that's about it. The, v, the supercharged V8, that's the difference. That's the difference you're paying uh, at least $15,000 more for. So if you value that, for sure. Otherwise, mm, I like how this one looks and feels. How comfortable are the seats, Anthony? Extremely very, very comfortable seats. Good bolstering, nice and supple. The suede holds you in place nicely. I would go, honestly, I'd go for that. Just If you just did the advanced package, then they're just quilted seats. And they look really, really good. These, The suede is all right. You're welcome, Ashutosh. They need performance versions, says the game launcher. Yeah, I have a feeling that Albert Bierman of the, uh, the guy who's X BMW M development head and now working on the Hyundai N products. I feel like he's going to get a chance to play around with the GV70 and GV80. Okay, and the G70. Here we go. I'm just revving it out. Now, what I do love is that it doesn't soft limit you. That exhaust note, though, is not, uh, not really inspiring. Is this better than the Audi SQ5 to me? Big smoky. Big smoky. <laughs> Um, I'll leave that verdict for my in-depth review that is coming out. But yes, that is, you're correct, that is a direct rival. Kevin R., hello. Uh, are the headrests properly supportive of the neck and head area? Yes, definitely. So they're not too small. They, they have a nice curve to the rest, so it kind of cradles your head there well. The back headrests are smaller, but they also do a great job. And they're adjustable, of course, so... Doesn't matter on your body type, you're gonna be fine. They need a four are the lower door panels soft. They are injection molded. Uh, who asked that? Uh, that was game launcher. Yes. They are injection molded. Juan Mata, welcome. You're a miles per hour member. Woohoo! Thank you, Juan. That's awesome. Is uh, and you are new, so Juan, I'm gonna give you a shout-out. Juan Mata. New miles per hour member, thank you so much for joining. And guys, if you want to help the channel out, I would really appreciate if you took Juan's direction and you became a, a miles per hour member. Is this the V6 or four cylinder Kevin R? This is the V6, and this is how this sounds. Mm. David, the MSRP on this one is $65,000. It's a lot, but this is a fully, fully loaded GV70. The 3.5T Sport, as I said, starts at... 42,000 the oh sorry the 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 regular GV70 is 42 the $53,600 figure will get you into this sport Amir hello and uh thanks music for helping David out as well do I think Hyundai releasing N line with racing pedigree is as exciting is a exciting exciting car personally I'm hella excited uh says Prothamesh I'm very excited because again Albert Bierman being behind those vehicles, I've driven the Veloster N on track and was really impressed by it. So I am, I'm super excited about what they've got going on. What are the questions? Horn test, says Kevin. Okay, we can do that. Here we go. I'm gonna close the door. Uh, the back door is still open. So that's this is what it's gonna sound like with the back door open. Pretty loud horn. That's a, that's a respectable horn. Amir, I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. What's the name of the exterior color? I think it's like metallic silver. Kevin R, this is, uh, boy, my total brain fart. Melbourne gray. It's a matte gray. It's a beautiful paint color. I love this, and it goes really well with the dark chrome accents on the grill. Amir, thank you so much. That's really nice. I really appreciate that. How's the noise cancellation while in traffic, Prothamesh? Well, you'll definitely hear it in my POV drives, but I'm gonna say it's good. It's it's not blowing my mind because there's a little bit of road noise, a little bit of wind noise, but I'm gonna say it's pretty darn good. Music, you're actually thinking of becoming a member of your channel. That would be so awesome. 
I would so appreciate that, definitely. And I'll for sure give you a shout out if you do become a member, that would be really awesome. Uh, let's see, what other questions do we have? Quality of the buttons, asks Ashutosh. Really good, Ashutosh. The button quality is excellent. So let's see, we got the window switches here. They feel super solid. And there's a nice click when you press them down and up. The door mirror controls, you've got power door mirrors and you press that button and it feels like that's gonna hold up really, really well. Uh, Big Smokey, it is a matte gray. Yeah, the Melbourne gray is a matte gray finish. So you have metallic flake, but I love the matte. The matte is really cool. Uh, Quintina, I can't drive it right now because I'm, I can't hold the camera and drive it, but you rest assured, all of my POV test drives and night drives and all that stuff is, is gonna be there. Juan, what is your question? On your channel, when I was looking for information for a car but later bought a CT6, the last great saloon from them, Juan, yes, the CT6 is awesome. I just drove, if you saw the videos on the channel, I had the CT5, I had the CT4. The CT5 V Blackwing is an insane vehicle. The CT4 V Blackwing is also good. CT6, Juan, did you get it with the um, the Blackwing engine? I gotta know. Uh, let's see, turn signal sound, sure. With the car just idling. That is the sound of the turn signals. You wanna see them? We can show you that. See, what's really cool about these turn signals is they wrap around the side of the headlight. And they're just like these thin bars that go in between the stacked four projector headlights. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a very satisfying turn signal sound, Kevin. I like it. You cannot get the Blackwing. Oh, it's too difficult in Europe. You got a Platinum. That's fair. Totally fair. I actually didn't know you could get the CT6 in Europe. That's good to know. Oh, I forgot to show you the turn signals in the rear. They, like the fronts, wrap around. So that's how these look. How's the Blue Link feature? Is it really convenient or just a gimmick? I honestly haven't used the Blue Link Prothe Mesh, so I can't, I can't speak to that. Didn't use the fingerprint scanner that's, uh, let's see if I can show you. That's right. <sighs> right there i did not use that yet so i can't speak to that or any of the app features what's the tire size are they 19 inch uh kevin 19s are standard on the sport but these are the 21s they're wrapped in 255 section michelin primacies amir i do like the car so much wow another high level of beauty and ele elegance agreed man they'd be cool if it was sequential uh, what was that in reference to? What, what? Oh, the sequential turn signals? Yeah, it would be cool if they flowed out. That would be rad. Let's see, what other questions we got? Signals, very soothing sound, oddly. Yeah, yeah Prothomesh, it is a really satisfying turn signal sound. And when you turn the turn signals on, you get the blind spot monitors on the left and right hand sides of the gauge cluster. So that's pretty cool. The wheel design? Oh, you mean, oh, on the... Not the steering wheel design, the actual wheel designs. Yeah, they, it's like a, a windmill is how I describe it in my review. I don't want to give away all of the stuff in my review, but the, the wheel designs are pretty funky. You know, Miles, black exterior would look so dope in the GV70. I'm with you, Kevin. I think it would look good, too. I will say, though, when I saw this matte gray, I was totally sold on this paint. It's, it looks so silky, especially in the sunlight. And again, goes great with all the dark chrome accents. Can you show your wedding band? What's it made of? It's black. Charlie, this is a rubberized uh, wedding band from, uh, I know it's got a Q on. I can't remember who makes it. Look for Q rubber band online and you'll find it. It's great. Super comfortable. Why didn't they offer ventilated back seats like on the GV80? You know, that's a good question. I want to feel like they just wanted to still have that distinction between compact sport luxury SUV and more premium. The GV80 is even more in this posh, luxurious end of the market. And uh, the GV70 is a little more on the sporty side. Still having heated rear seats available is great. This one has that option. Ventilated rear seats would be really nice though. But you know what? The Mercedes GL G63 Blue China, she's awesome. I do love it. I saw a car like it. Yeah, it's that Blue China. I loved that SUV. I loved it a lot. What's the MPG, Kevin? Uh, went over that a little earlier in the video. It is 21 combined, says Genesis, but I've been getting 11. 11 combined MPG. 
bad. Uh, Kerbo, hey Miles, I have a 3.5T advanced in Cardiff Green. Is that a good value trim for the 3.5T? Also, I love the gray too. So you have a 3.5T. I actually really like the advanced trim. Kerbo, I would argue the advanced trim may be my favorite trim. So you are going to miss out on the limited slip rear differential by not having the Prestige, the Sport Prestige, but you do get the quilted Napa leather seats. These are Napa leather, but Napa leather and suede. And I love the quilted Napa leather seats. And you get a lot of the great features that you have in this GV70 in that advanced trim. So Kerbo, I would say, yeah, that's, that's a really good option. The gray is nice as well. And Cardiff green, good choice. Love a good green. Uh, Genesis GV70, direct better competitor to the XM and the Urus. Uh, music, mm, not really. The XM is going to be a segment above this, and it's going to be a plug-in hybrid. The GV70 is not offered at all in plug-in hybrid. Urus is also going to be a vastly more expensive SUV. That one's starting at like, I uh, forgot the number off the top of my head, but it's, uh, I mean, the one I had as tested was over $300,000. This, the max you're gonna pretty much buy is this at $65,000. How large is the trunk, Quintina? We showed that earlier. It's 29 cubic feet of space. You can open it a couple different ways. Oh, you know what, while the car is on, I just like showing this. Dylan, thanks for joining. How is the power compared to the GLC or the X3? Good question. So the direct versions of the GLC and the X3 would be the X3 M50i and the GLC 43 AMG. Both of those make a little more power. So 375 horses for this one, the GLC 43, 385, so 10 more. And then the um, X3 M40i is 382, so seven more than this. Can you get the GV80 with the same steering wheel design? I do believe it's like a very similar design. I don't think it's the same. Actually, no, no, it's not. I'm wrong. It has that sort of looped uh, design to the steering wheel, and I agree. I like this better. So I don't think you can get the GV80 with this steering wheel design. Is the trickle charger position easy to access? That's a great question, Prathamesh. Um, I think you pretty much just hook up any trickle charger to the battery. So the battery, is it accessible here under the hood or is it in the trunk? I haven't looked for that, to be honest. I'll look for it now. Amir, the color is called Melbourne Gray. It's this matte finish. It's an extra 1500 bucks. Well worth it, if you ask me. It's a beautiful color. Battery is... Uh, oh, is it under here? Ugh. Popping it up. I think it says the positive terminal is there. Oh, I have to do both. It's not... Ugh. Oh, no, those are just the fuses. No, the battery is... I'm not sure where it is. On the, if anyone knows where the battery is in the GV70, let me know. I think it, it's not going to be in the trunk, would it be? Not sure. But, uh, yeah, so I can't answer your question about hooking up the trickle charger. Ashutosh, beautiful car in the hands of an awesome reviewer. Thank you. I'm not going to break anything, Kevin, I promise. Giving you Bentley vibes? Yeah, well, that's, again, because Bentley's designers, some of them have moved over towards Genesis, and so they're designing Genesis vehicles. Top right corner? Is it over here? Oh, okay, so there's... That's wiper fluid there. Oh, is it, is it back behind there? That would be an odd place to put the battery. Back over there, Kevin. Pop that open near the strut, near this. The battery's under here. Well, I'm not gonna pop it because I, I definitely don't want to break anything. But I don't know, is the battery back under there? Maybe, maybe it is. Do you mind showing us the turn signals and rear lights? Dylan, I did show those a little earlier. I'll show them again. No problem. They're not sequential, Dylan. So here we go, turn signals. Once again, you get the blind spot monitor here. So it shows you your blind spot on the left gauge if you're turning left, right gauge if you're turning right. Ashutosh, yeah, I love having everyone here. So these are the turn signals and they're cool because they go around to the side instead of it just being visible on the front. And they're little bars going in between the stacked headlights, top and bottom. Yeah, Dylan, the camera is really useful. You got the turn signals on the door mirror here. How large is the car itself? It's about the size of a X3 of a GLC, a little bigger than a Porsche Macan. 
The Velar was another one mentioned. It's about that size. Does this one have ambient lighting, Kevin? Yes, it does. It's going to be hard to see during the day. I would argue it's almost impossible to see during the day. But at night, I'll have a night drive of this. You can see the ambient lighting. I'll tell you where it shows up. It shows up. Well, you can kind of see that there. Okay, there you go. You've got some of the ambient lighting you can see there. So it shows up here. It goes around to the other side of the climate control settings and shows up here on the console. Uh, are the stocks intrusive or just perfect? No, I think they're they're about right. And you've got knurled finishes on the ends. So I wouldn't say anything knurled finish is going to be intrusive. No, they're just about right, I would say. What are the questions? The back kind of looks like Mercedes EQ series. Hmm, let me see. Making you want to trade in your GLC? Well, Kevin, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be an awful move because this is a really, really nice SUV. But you'll have to watch my full review to get my full opinions. Looking a little like the EQ series? Mm, okay, I can see some of that. EQ series is definitely not going to have these integrated exhaust ports because that's the EV from Mercedes-Benz. Those exhausts remind me of the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. They don't share a platform, do they? No, no, no. No, no sharing of platforms between Genesis, a Hyundai, or a Korean manufacturer, and Alfa Romeo, a, a uh, Italian manufacturer. But yeah, I do agree. The exhaust ports look very like the Stelvio. Good pull on that one. Can we close up part of the hood that goes over the front bumper a bit? Ah, yes. Okay. I know what you're talking about, Charlie. This little lip right here just extends just past it a bit. It's sort of a funky thing. But honestly, your eye is never really going there. I I never I never really like felt drawn to that as you're looking at it. You you would have to kind of do what I just did to see that. Because looking straight on, I'm not looking at those things. I'm looking at the overall design at the front. I'm not looking at the overhang here. And of course, they do this so that you have this this kind of continuous line here on the headlights. I don't mind it. Bentley people really know how to design and integrate textures and shapes. Proth Mesh well said. They certainly do. All right. Uh, catalytic converters, Kevin. I'm not going to crawl under the car to show you. <laughs> I haven't poked around to that extent to find them. Any other questions? Uh, Game Launcher, why don't they offer dash cam features like the X7 or X5? I'm sure it has 360 cameras. Yes, it does. I don't know. That's a good question. I feel like a lot of automakers are going to start offering that, either as a subscription service or an added feature. I know Cadillac now offers that on their Escalade. Your parents are getting this car soon, Amir. Uh, they're making a good decision. I really like the GV70. Dylan, while we all agree that this is a beautiful SUV, what do you feel is this SUV's biggest shortcoming? Good question. Uh, you know, I don't want to give away too much. But let's just say there are a couple performance-related features that the GV70 has a little bit of work to do. And that's why, again, I'm excited for Albert Bierman to, to put his talented hands on the GV70 and the, the G70 and, and see what he can do with them from a performance, performance standpoint. Does this one have capitalist feeling? No, Kevin, it doesn't. And that's a big mess. You got a cap. Capitalist fueling, why don't people do, why don't automakers do that more? I don't get it. You already have a locking fuel door when the car locks, so what's the point of having a cap? It does require premium fuel, as someone asked earlier. You need to go interior. Ryan, yeah, okay. I showed the interior a little bit before, but here's the back seat area. Some fun things like uh, sun shades back here. You got leatherette in the doors, carbon fiber trim, just like the front. It is pretty. And the Napa leather and suede seats in the back, also like the front. Here's a quick look at the front cabin with that 14 and a half inch touchscreen infotainment and your digital gauge cluster. It's also a 3D digital gauge cluster, which is pretty cool. They made a trim to compare with the BMW X3M. Yeah, Dylan, I'm with you. Because this is competing with the X3M 50i, but man, an X3M rival or a GLC 63 rival would be super cool. Anthony, the headroom and knee room in the back seat. So this is me behind my own driving position at six feet tall. I've got, you know, I've got a couple inches, two, two and a half inches of knee room. The foot pockets are good size, the headroom. Let me flip this bad boy around. 
I fit. I don't have acres of headroom, but I do fit. What was the question, Kevin? Is it just heated? The rear seats? The rear seats are just heated, not ventilated and heated. Just heated. The GLC compared to this is shameful. So, wh meaning what? Like, it, it can't hack it with this? I, I think that Genesis did come out and astonish a lot of automakers with this vehicle. Does this have a spare tire? It does, Dylan. It has a donut in the trunk. I'll show you that trunk again. Ryan, I would drive it, but I'm also holding the camera, so I can't do that and hold the camera safely. The front seats are heated and ventilated, Kevin, and the front driver's seat has massaged. The passenger seat does not. The boot space, so him, well, we're looking at the trunk. 29 cubic feet of space means it's tied with a BMW X3 for the most cargo space in the segment. So Dylan was asking about the spare tire. Lift this up and lift that cover up and there is a donut under there. Not a full size spare, but there is a donut. What other questions do we have? This one's the driver's car. Yeah, of the of the GV70 is currently available. Yes, Prothamesh, the 3.5 T-Sport is the driver's car, especially with the prestige pack because you get the limited slip rear differential. Oh, the front seats? Yeah, the front seats are heated and ventilated, Kevin. What are the questions? What's the Genesis box to the left under the mat? Oh, okay, under here? That is just our user manual in here. So your handbook and then user manual is down below this stuff for the GV70. But that's about all that can fit back here. There's not a lot of storage under the floor like some crossovers in this segment. Oh, you meant the GLC, the looks are so much better than the GLC. Yeah, game, game launcher, I'll be honest, this looks really, really nice. Mohammed, you're late, but you're here. Thanks for joining. Is the delivery experience on par with the Germans? You know, I don't know what the delivery experience is like. I, I don't think you can, for example, I know BMW, you can have a European delivery of their vehicles. I don't think you can have a South Korean delivery of your GV70 and you drive it around and you drive it home. Can this fit a big dog like a Husky? Kevin, yes, it can. I fit my Rhodesian Ridgeback in the back of here. Um, the floor is kind of high, so he did have to crouch, but when he was laying down, there's enough boot space for him laying down. What do you think about the new Mercedes AVTR Vision, Avatar Vision, and the BMW iVision Circular? Music, um, I'll be honest, I'm not super familiar with those two systems. Um, I'm guessing that the AVTR Vision is uh, a concept. The iVision Circular, I'm, is, I'm not sure what that is. So I'll be honest, I don't know what those are. I have to look into them. Aaron, Aaron, what's up? Thanks for joining. Aaron is a miles per hour member. How you doing? Does it have a third row seat? No, Eric. This GV70 does not. The GV80 has an optional third row seat, but not the GV70. Yeah, Kevin R., you are correct. Yes, that one has an optional third row seats. Do the back seats fold down? Yes. Pull these levers, Charlie. And the seats do fold, and they fold flat, too. So you get a nice, big, flat floor, floor and 57 cubic feet of space. Might have to get the Palisade, Kevin. Do you feel this vehicle handles better than some of the Germans? Dylan, again, I don't want to give away too much here. Let's just say that uh, it's it the X3 M50 M40i is still my benchmark for this sub full on M sub full on AMG segment of SUV. Love that the back seats full flat. Yes, that is a really nice feature, Kevin, in this SUV. When you dro drive it in the videos, is it fun to rip around or does it feel mushy and sketch? Does not feel mushy and sketch. It is a lot of fun, but I have some critiques and you'll have to see those in my in-depth review. Aaron says, this car is an exceptional value for everything you get, great package and design. I agree. I agree, especially when you think the starting figure for the 3.5T Sport is 53 grand, and the starting figure for the X3 M50i is under just under 59, and the GLC 43 is $63,000. You get start to see like, hey, this is actually a great, great deal. Are the doors heavy, Tristan? N not heavy, but they don't feel cheap at all, and they make a really good solid sound. They're not like heavy, like, oh, I can't get the door open, but they, they do feel nice and solid, and listen, 
good solid thunk as that door closes. The door handles also feel solid, Tristan, yes. You know, they don't feel like, like I could rip them off, but they also don't feel like they weigh a ton. Does it have soft clothes, Dylan? No, not even available on the GV70. It is available on the GV80. The exterior and interior are amazing. I agree with you, Ryan. Close up this trunk. Do the door sills light up? Ask Kevin. I don't believe so. No, they don't. So you do get these aluminum tread plates with a knurled finish, and that's real nice, but they don't light up. What are the materials on the pillars? On the pillars, we have this suede wrapping. So the headliner is suede wrapped on the Sport Prestige and Sport Advanced version of the GV70. How many compartments do the front occupants have? Well, they've got this big door cubby here. You've got this little cubby in here for your wireless smartphone charging. And you've got this center console in here. And it does have a little extra space just in front of the lip of this. Out of curiosity, I know Cadillac has illuminated door handles. Are they illuminated on the GV70? Oh, Dylan, that's a good question. I cannot remember. I do. Yeah, they are. They are illuminated. I forgot. There are not puddle lights. Prothomesh, though. What other questions did I miss? Are the seat covers full leather? Yes. The backs of the seats are not. So it's full leather up until here. Uh, can I? Can you even see that? Here, back here, that turns into hard plastic. Is there a brake upgrade? Package looks as if they should have better breakers. Tristan, there is not a brake upgrade, and as we'll see in my in-depth review, that is something I think they could work on. Do I think the Genesis brand is a viable player against Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Audi, etc.? Aaron, yes, I absolutely do. And I don't want to give away my review because you guys should watch it. But this is a heck of a vehicle, and Genesis is making all the right moves these days. All right, guys, I think we're going to end it there. Thank you so much for joining. Juan, thank you so much for being a member and contributing to the channel and just supporting everything I'm doing. Thank you all for joining in and asking great questions. And I will see you guys again next time. I'll answer just two last questions here. Peter Greg, are there any hints that something similar in an EV will be in the works? I would, I would be shocked if Genesis is not working on that. Considering they just released an EV concept, there's going to be something in the works. And last question I was going to answer from Mari. The base price of this car is $53,600 for the Sport trim. And the, um, the one that's tested here is sixty-five. dollars Thank you guys again so much for watching. And I will see you again next time. Have a great weekend.